At this time, we're going to begin the funeral services of Dr. Bennett C. Fishbane. Rabbi Ryan Daniels from North Shore Congregation Israel will be officiating. For those of you who are here, we ask you to take a moment to be sure that your cell phones have been turned off. And we welcome those of you who are online. when it came time for their mourning as a symbol of their grief, as a symbol of their mourning, they took the corner of their garment and they tore it to walk with them in their ways. As we find ourselves here in this sacred space, I'd invite you to take that deep breath in to feel the presence of your family at your side. When you're ready, from the very bottom of that black ribbon, I'd invite you to make a small tear. David can help if that's challenging. I know it's under a few coats. Say for hearts that are torn, we perform this act of Kriya. There are three Hebrew words that we offer a blessing that we say, even in moments like this. I'll say one word and I'll invite you to repeat after me. We are Baruch Dayan Ha'emet, which means blessed is the source of truth and our strength. We say together, Amen. When we met yesterday, 
Harbor, you told me dad was at peace in these last days. He wasn't afraid. He knew the love, all of you, the love that you shared. He knew what our tradition meant by the journey of life. Birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until looking backwards or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. We'll turn to the words of Psalm 23, words spoken by our people throughout the generations at moments like this, moments when we are in need ourselves of comfort, solace, when we feel the loss of a loved one. I'll offer the first sentence in Hebrew and then I'll invite you to read the English translation that's found on the service handout that you have in your hands. Please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The measure of a man. Not how did he die, but how did he live? Not what did he gain, but what did he give? These are the units to measure the worth of a man as a man, regardless of birth. Not what was his station, but had he a heart, and how did he play his God-given part? Was he ever ready with a word of good cheer to bring back a smile, to banish a tear? Not what was his shrine, nor what was his creed, but had he cared for others in need? Not what did the sketch in the newspaper say, but how many were sorry when he passed away. This afternoon, we gather to remember Bennett Fishbane. We join our hearts together to give comfort and to give strength to his family. Dr. Bennett Fishbane was the beloved husband of Zena. Monday would have been their 73rd wedding anniversary. That day every year that Bennett's notoriously bad florist would always disappoint, forgetting to deliver the bouquet. When we spoke yesterday, Zena, you told me that neither of your families were particularly thrilled when you told them your plans to wed. What drew us together, you reflected? I don't remember. But what you will indeed always remember is how Bennett made you feel when you were together. You shared a glorious life, you told me. I loved him with all of my heart. To which Bennett would surely reply, I love you right back. 
You built a loving home together, never exchanging a harsh word. The devoted parents of Barbara and Alan, Ken and Nancy and Sue. As Barbara said yesterday, there was no such thing as in-laws in our family. Alan, in time, Bennett became like your own father, a relationship that began after he literally brought you in for a meal. Ken, that was your parents' M.O. Bennett and Zena's home was everyone's home. Whether you knew you were new to the community, needed a meal, whatever, everyone was welcome. Bennett loved people. But as Sue said, nobody was more important than his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. Bennett was the proud grandfather of Jennifer and Dan and Sarah, Kevin, Annie, Maggie, Ashley, Chelsea, and Michael, the cherished great-grandfather of Rachel and Catherine, and Jacob, Sam, Ben, and Nathan. Each of you cherished your time with Zadie, holding on to your treasured memories. Sarah, you remarked yesterday how proud Bennett was always of his family. Sue, about your father's relationship with his grandchildren, you summed it up best. If they wanted chicken nuggets, they got it. If they wanted bagels, lox, and cream cheese, they got that too. He didn't play ball or fish with them, but whatever else they wanted, they got. Dan, Zadie helped you build your Ewok village. I'm sorry for sharing that publicly. And stole the dance floor at yours and Sarah's wedding. Chelsea, Zadie meant the world to you. He did all the dad things for me, you said. Michael, your perspective is unique, given your time working alongside Bennett at White Hall. Of course, it is wonderful to hear the stories of how he helped so many there, but you saw, you witnessed firsthand how he touched so many lives. You vividly remember Zadie's interactions with one permanent resident in particular. Stricken with dementia, she was unable to remember even the names and faces of her own family. But Bennett, she smiled every time she came for ice cream. They spoke Yiddish together. Yes, he was known far and wide as the ice cream man at Whitehall, a position that opened many doors for him even getting him a few extra slices of pastrami at the deli. He was known by so many other names, too. He was Bennett and Bubbles. He was a master amateur gardener and will forever be remembered for his service to our country and the U.S. Navy, stationed in Brooklyn, New York, during the war. He was Doc working 37 years as an optometrist at Greenberg's in Omaha. Patients would come from Nebraska, Colorado, Illinois to see Dr. Fishbane, and later they brought their own kids and their grandkids to see him too. Nancy, you first met Bennett at his optometry shop. Bennett worked six days a week, 51 weeks a year, rarely taking a vacation. In fact, Jennifer, you have a newspaper photo that perfectly demonstrates your grandfather's unusual work ethic. Omaha was shuttered by a severe winter storm, and the newspaper captured your grandfather trudging through the snow to check on the shop. He was the only person crazy enough to be out that day. Perhaps crazy is too harsh. Bennett was, no, <laughs> Bennett was dedicated. He was loyal. He was honorable. He was a good man. He was a just man. The North Star, a moral compass. He was a man of great faith. Sue, you told me that your father's faith was so important to him. He grew up in the shul, or we grew up in the shul, you said. We were there Friday nights, Shabbat mornings, and Sunday mornings for Sunday school. We saw my dad singing in the choir, passing out prayer books, setting up tables for Shabbat dinner. My dad did all the grocery shopping for the shul and any schlepping that was needed to. Bennett was a cornerstone of the Jewish community wherever he lived, Omaha, Las Vegas, and here in Chicago. He was a regular at Mariah Congregation's Daily Minion. 
Bennett loved that he bequeathed his love of Judaism and Yiddishkeit, Lador Vador, to his children and to his grandchildren. I'd like to conclude with a story that Jennifer shared during our call yesterday. Five or six years ago, while attending Minion at Moriah, just as he did with all new newcomers, Bennett introduced himself to a woman who he had never met before. He soon learned that she was there to say Kaddish for a parent who recently passed, but she didn't know how to recite the prayer herself. So Bennett invited her to sit with him, assuring her they would say the words together. They did that every morning for an entire year. Soon we too, today, will turn to those sacred words, this time remembering Bennett for his kindness, for his devotion, for his love. In preparation, I'd like you to call to mind your fondest memory, an interaction you shared, a feeling you associate with him. We remember now moments shared, the times of warmth and closeness, the times of love and companionship. We commit to treasuring all that was good in his life, and pray to retain that good as part of the very fabric of our lives. Our tradition teaches Zecher Tzadik Levracha, the memory of the righteous will indeed be for blessing. May Bennett always live in our hearts. May we think of him tenderly and revere his memory. May his memory lead us to love. And then indeed, will that memory be for blessing. Pause for a moment of personal reflection, of prayers for Bennett's family. God of compassion, we pray the words of this traditional funeral prayer. If you're feeling able, I'd invite you to rise. Et nishmat ben Zion ben Chaim Yisrael u Pearl Lea shalach lo lamo balarachamim yasti rehu beseter kanafav lo olamim bitzor bitzor achayim et nishmato Adonai hu nachalato v'yanuach b'shalom al mishkavo and Omar Amen God of abundant mercy God most high. May the soul of our loved one who has gone into eternity find the gift of perfect peace in your embrace. Together with the holy and pure whose light shines like the radiance of heaven. Compassionate God, hold Bennett close to you forever so that his soul may be bound up in the bond of life eternal. And may he rest in peace. Amen.
ladies and gentlemen, for those who are online, at this point we're going to do the some ceremonial earth and also earth from Israel. Memorial contributions in his memory to the Moriah congregation or candles to crayons. That information is all on our website. For those who are here, it's on the service folder. And then in a moment, the rabbi will lead everyone in the Moor's Kaddish and the service will be over. So we'll conclude with words of Mourner's Kaddish. Prayers are on your service handout. We will include Bennett in our Kaddish list at NSCI for these next four weeks to mark the period of Shloshim and then reach out to you each year to remember him on the anniversary of the yard site, the anniversary of his passing. Say these words together. Yitkadal, Yitkadash, Shame Raba, Be Alma, Divara, Hirute, Viamlich, Malchute, Chayechon, Viomechon, Chaye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Ba Agalau, Vizman, Kariv, Imru, Amen. Yehe, Shme Raba, Mivorah, Olam, Ume, Almaya, Yiparach, Vishtabach, Vit Paar, Vit Ramam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shme de Kudja, Brihu, the Ela mean call beer hata, Vishirata, Tush Behata, Venechemata, Da Amiran, Be Alma, Vimru, Amen. De He Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, De Chaim Alenu Ve Al Kol Yisrael, Ve Imru, Amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya ase shalom, alenu ve al kol yisrael, ve imru, amen, zichron olavracha, may Bennett's memory always be for an abiding blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the services here at the graveside, and we are going to turn off the online portion. Try to have a restful Shabbat.